the response from Israel was going to be pretty much unprecedented. And then the question becomes, what is too much? What is acceptable? What, what strays into potential war crimes? At what point does your right to defend itself give you the right to obliterate large sections of Gaza and tens of thousands of innocent people, particularly given that half the population is under 18? I mean, that's a staggering number of children. Um, and particularly given the complexity of the fact that Hamas deliberately embed themselves amongst the civilian population, making it incredibly difficult to target terrorists from civilians. So that's what I mean about this being a very difficult story to cover and a very difficult moral quandary for me. I don't see it as a simple thing at all. Um, and as it's gone on, what I've felt is that, and you're starting to see a splinter now in leading members of the Israeli political sphere, is that they haven't really got an end game for what happens after the war. And I've, all, I've been asking that question for months. Well, what do you do when this is over? And there's no answer. You know, a lot of Gaza has been completely destroyed. People's homes are gone. Uh, they're now attacking what they say are the last remnants of Hamas, but I suspect there's a lot more Hamas left than we think. They're now attacking them in a refugee camp where they've sent over a million people, right? None of that sits easily with me, and I don't think with many people who are not on the extremity of this debate. So I don't know what the end game is here. Um, I'm, you know, you're seeing now Netanyahu sort of suggesting we're nearing the end of the war. Well, well, how? You haven't got rid of Hamas. That was your stated mission. And it's an interesting thing with public opinion in Israel because the polls suggest that they support the elimination of Hamas, majority of, of people in Israel, but they do not support Netanyahu personally. And so the moment this war is over, he's almost certainly going to be out of a job. And then he goes in to face corruption charges in a trial. Where's the incentive for Netanyahu to end this war? You know, and he's being driven by some very right-wing members of his cabinet, you know, Smodrich and Ben Gavir and others. And their language, I have to say, I, I don't think Israel is waging a genocide because it has the tools to actually wage a, a, a total genocide of Palestinian people in Gaza. But I do think some of the language some of those people have been using has been genocidal. And I can understand why people are very fearful that that is what they really want to do, drive Palestinians from Gaza irrevocably. So, you know, what happens now? How do we go back to any kind of normality? What happens to the, the people who've been displaced, who've lost their homes? What happens to the ideology which fueled all this to start with? Has that been made worse by the scale of Israel's response? Or is it a bit like what happened with the Nazis after World War II, where there was such a ferocious attack on all things Nazi that it kind of pretty much disappeared? I, I think that's a very big question as to whether the ideology behind Hamas is actually been fueled by what's happened. If you've had a child who's been killed, are you more or less likely to gravitate to the people that you may perceive in your mind have acted as some kind of resistance. I don't know. But it's, it's going to be a huge question for what happens, I think, after this is over.